Hi, Mr. Ramos. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about violence in video games. Um, and so the topics I'm going to be looking at are mental effects by video games, substance use in video games, uh, anti-religious and anti-government ideas and themes, and storylines in video games. So first off, um, mental effects by video games as a whole. Um, it's a common misconception that violent video games will always, no matter what, make kids more violent. Uh, and that's been disproved and also somewhat supported by uh, a study done by Zahn Villines. Not quite sure how to pronounce her last, na her last name, but her first name is Zahn. Um, so she is a behavioral health specialist, and she conducted an experiment that found that students that play, specifically students that play three hours of video games daily, show higher levels of aggression and lower levels of academic engagement, which makes sense because if you're spending your whole home life uh, watching or playing video games, you're not going to want to spend the rest of your life in school. Um, and while this may uh, support the idea that violent video games make kids more violent, she continue to study that and continue to find that kids who play video games daily but it's around two hours of video games are not more violent and that they're they actually show lower rates of aggression than kids who do not play at all uh which is really interesting to find with that um daily video games are beneficial uh which is what she found um and there and she also discovered that there's a lot of things that have negative effects on child uh, child's personality and makes them more aggressive um such as home life or just things that are going on in their lives and it's not necessarily always based around video games so for substance use in video games uh it's another common misconception that Playing games with drugs in them will immediately lead to using drugs in real life. Um, this is not true based on a study done in 2017 by a recovery center. Uh, so I attached a graph onto here. And if you look at the graph, it's 40% are fake drugs. So those are drugs that, like people have never heard of, like... Um, the scarecrow drug from Batman that makes you hallucinate and ends up killing you. So that would be a negative effect and people would probably steer clear of that. Um, and then for real drugs, um, there's two different uh, categories, the negative outcome and the positive outcome. So of the 61% that are real drugs, um, only a, a little more than half of that is are, are made up of... Um, positive outcomes, while the other half is, uh, is negative outcomes, um, so, yeah, um, but then there's another research study done in 2012 that showed that the number of video games featuring drugs in general has gone down from 12% to 2%, which is really good to see, um, Another point to be made is that uh, Henry Jenkins, a, who is a director at MIT, uh, said that when kids play video games, they know that it's just a game. Like, they, they won't try to recreate stuff because they know it's just a game. They know that, that drugs will get you arrested if you are caught and stuff like that, and they won't try to repeat that. Um, and he has a quote that says, I, a child who responds to a video game in the same way that he or she would respond to a real-world tragedy could be showing symptoms of being severely emotionally disturbed. Um, so this plays into, this, um, plays into the fact that there are other factors that contribute to drug use, and it's not always just video games cause drug use. For anti-religious and anti-government ideas, um, there were many. There are many people that think that um, the like magic in video games or the rebelliousness in video games cause um, changes in traditional beliefs of the child. Um, Brian Kranz, who is a health journalist, for. 
um, for a health line, which is a like a medical website type of thing, um, said that video games uh, only show how breaking the law is fun, um, and he says that that they that the uh, video game will show breaking the law as uh, fun or justified and without negative consequences. Uh, however. There are a lot of games, such as Assassin's Creed and Modern Warfare, that show the government as corrupt people that need to be taken out. Um, and that really, show, that really boosts the morals of the child to know that, like, if someone's doing something wrong, it's your job to step up and say something about it. Um, so then, uh, Dr. Bruce Bartholow... Uh, who is a professor at Missouri, at the University of Missouri. Um, he agrees with this with uh, what I have just said about teaching morals, saying that video games are excellent teaching tools. Um, and he goes on to say stuff about the whole moral boosting and things like that. Um, so he... Um, so... I looked at one that was, for the magic part of this, Black Ops 2. It has satanic rituals and um, different, like, magic ideas in it. Uh, but it's always uh, presented as ridiculous or far-fetched. Um, and that helps you really kind of determine the fictionality of it, um, which is good for, for kids. Um, and there's one quote that, that really stood out to me that really, um, that really stuck with me from doing this research, and that was one by Christopher J. Ferguson. He was a student at Texas A&M, International University, uh, and he said that the, that small groups of people that may be harmed consist of people with pre-existing personality or mental health problems. So he's saying that there are definitely different factors that play into um, someone's violence or, like, rebelliousness or uh, satanic ideas, uh, and that it's not just video games create those. And storylines of different video games. Um, and there are a lot of people who believe that the violence is just a part of the video game, while the video game as a whole is telling a story. So, Kayla Herrera, uh, who is a writer for Cinema Blend, which is, like, an entertainment-type newspaper um, that, that writes about, like, video games and movies and books and things like that, uh, they, she said storytelling in gaming is something that's really caught on. Um, she goes on to talk about God of War and says that the emotions in the characters are ones that you can, like, get attached to, like in a movie, um, and that the different, uh, styles of that being, like, a player chooses the story that they want to follow, or they choose, or they just are in the story and they don't really have much of a choice, those both are still, like, uh, very capturing storylines that, uh, that are made in those movies, um, and she finishes um, by giving other examples of, of video games with great storylines and it's interesting because then I looked at the different type the different movies that have actually been made and they're all the same so Assassin's Creed Halo War, uh, World of Warcraft Rampage and Resident Evil have all been made into movies just in the past uh, like five years that and they're all like very good um, well-liked movies um, and those were all made out of violent video games so uh, I think that those four points with substance use uh, uh, religious anti-religious and anti-government ideas storylines and mental effects um, all being debunked by uh, by these statistics and facts uh, will really show that the violence in video games does not have negative effects uh, on kids.